Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, praise. You created us to praise. Why? Because we're your children and you love us. Heavenly Father, as we walk that Lenten journey towards a cross and an empty tomb, the words of praise still fill our lips because we know what's coming. Your death and resurrection has brought us life to the full. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as I've mentioned, praise. That's a word that we don't hear used very much during this 40-day journey we call Lent. And maybe it seems odd to have a, a message on praise in the middle of Lent. We've been shifting our focus more towards repentance or returning, turning around and going back to our Lord as we prepare for Jesus' death and resurrection. Maybe that calls for a little shift in our thinking. Could it be that praise is not just shallow happiness? Instead, it's an expression of heartfelt gratitude to a merciful and a compassionate God. A God who celebrates when the lost are found. In the story of the prodigal son, Jesus reveals that praise and thanksgiving are all captured in this reuniting that's filled with joy. The beauty of a story being told and retold is it's its familiarity, how we come to know it well. I think the prodigal son is probably one of the best known parables in the Bible. But there's a danger with being familiar with the story. Sometimes I think we skim right over the messages that are embedded, especially in this classic story of who God is and how he acts and responds with us. And there are many ways we can listen to this absolutely amazing story that really captures our minds. Tonight, I'd like to approach it from the angle of the Father, hearing of it in his own words. I think while many of us can identify with the younger son or even the older brother, we're called as followers of Jesus to be like the Father. The words of Jesus lead us to be compassionate, as your Father in heaven is also compassionate. So this is an invitation and also an opportunity for us as we hear the words of the Father. I was the proud father of two sons. Unlike all parents, I thought about them and I worried about them. I love both of my sons with a deep, deep love. But then that day, like a knife in my heart. The pain I felt was unbearable. My younger son came to me and said, I'm out of here. I'm leaving home. He's leaving me. He's leaving everything that I've done for him. He even asked for his share of the inheritance. I mean, this was more than a journey away from home. This was total separation the love that I had given to him. By asking for his inheritance early, he was cutting off our relationship, almost as though he was saying, Dad, I wish you were dead. I was devastated. I wanted to take him by the shoulders and shake some sense into that boy. But I had no choice. I had to let him go. To see him walk away from me left me pulling my hair out. It, it was like a funeral procession. And I stood at the edge of the home, watching as he disappeared into the distance. My eyes they were filled with tears. My heart was broken beyond any words. My son was lost to me. And I knew he wasn't coming back. His jaw was set, his mind was made up, his heart was fixed on a path of resistance. Praise? <laughs> Not in my house. But despite his leave taking, I vowed I would never stop loving him. I would always wait for him to turn around and come back. It was a while. 
And sometime later, it was like most days, it was hot and dry. My older son was out in the fields with the other hired workers. He was obedient. He worked his tail off. I was so grateful to have at least have this son living under my roof. But I remember looking way out in the distant horizon, and I spotted what looked to be a silhouette of a person coming my direction. But the way this person carried himself resembled the way my lost son walked. But I thought, no way. Just my imagination. It's a mirage. But I could not take my eyes off this person. The closer he came, I began to realize, wait a minute, this is my son. I ran to him as fast as my legs would go. Now, with no words spoken, I could tell that he was desperately tired, hungry. Didn't matter to me. My heart leapt with joy. I felt nothing but praise and thanksgiving. Praise God for rescuing my son and bringing him home. Praise God. My son, who was dead to me and lost, is alive and back home. There is no other way to describe my joy than thank you, Lord, praise. And that's a praise you can't keep to yourself. I ordered my servants to prepare an all-out feast, kill the fat calf, invite our friends, serve the finest of wines, take part in the party of my life and in his. Talk about a homecoming bash. My older son, he just refused to take part. And believe it or not, I felt the same heartbreak concerning my older son. In my own way, I, I recognized he was lost too, not in the same way, but he was still lost, focused on himself. His heart was lost in jealousy and resentment his own brother. I shared with my older son all that I have. This praise party is about the dead being brought back to life, the lost being found. His brother is alive. I invited him to the party, praying that his love for the younger brother would still override that resentment that was filling his heart and blackening it out. Now, I recognize that many people today can identify with the older son here. So you can probably empathize with his, I am not going to this celebration. But moving from fear and resentment to love and to joy is moving in God-modeled generosity. It isn't always logical. But I think the story of the prodigal son helps it all make sense. It's not always easy to be compassionate or forgiving, especially when someone you love has cut you to shreds. Our hearts want to be filled with joy and gladness and praise, but oftentimes it's on our own terms, isn't it? But we are called to love one another with the same selfless love that God gives to each one of us. Welcome home. Praise God when the one who was lost is found. During Lent and every season, we find our true home and celebrate being with our Lord. May our lips be filled with praise as we live Lent as people of the resurrection. Because from that cross, God waits with open arms to say, welcome home. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all of our human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the true faith of our Lord Jesus. Amen.